quick uh, inside walkthrough on this uh, high gain utopia. Um, you've seen that we 3D printed this uh, bezel for the display. We tried to keep everything as, as neat as possible. Mark found this uh, knob here that works really good on the channel display, it keeps everything looking uh, really nice. The uh, turns counter works. As you can tell, you watch the frequency go up and down there. And you can spin it on real slow if you want to. Get it right where you want it. And, and you know, these old turns counters, they're, you know, they're going to be pretty close. But, you know, it's a lot easier. And, and this is really cool. Because he has the turns counter, we can go, let's say we want to go five down. We can do that. And we don't have to finger around too much to get it right on five down. Just like that. Or we want to go five up. You know, we can do that. But here's the deal. In in this mode, it works really good to do that. But in VFO mode, you can just select that digit. So if we go here to VFO mode, we can just select the digit that we want. So we can just select that digit and go down there, go up wherever you want to. Or we can go, you know, every 10, you know, go in between channels if you want to. So, I mean, you know, it's pretty much you go where you want to go with it. Um, it's, not a, it's not a limited thing. You can pretty much go where you want to go. All the way over here to, to the 1 meg area, you know. Any, anywhere you want, man. It, it just doesn't matter. Okay, so a little, a little look through here. Yep, tens of kilohertz there. Real nice. So here we go. Let's look through this. All right. I guess i got to stand up for this one. So let's go through some of the items that we have in here. So the Arduino, or the microprocessor, lives here, right here. And the reason that we have that heat shrink around it, and if you notice, if you ever have to do anything to the radio and you check it out, it's, it's loose. It's not a real tight heat shrink, and that lets air flow through it. All we're using the heat shrink for is to give a firm, wide base for this uh, double-sided sticky foam. And that sucker's on there for good. It ain't coming off unless you really pull on it. So then the wires come out of there, and we go over here to the RF generator board. And this, this RF generator board does two things. On there, that's the 19 megahertz uh, IF for the, uh, the, the converter for HF, and that's your IF for the actual radio. If you've ever had one open, you notice the whole entire... IC board is gone. We don't even use that. Uh, that just gets pulled out. These two wires here uh, come back here and they are sitting against that rubber piece so it's not going to short. Uh, those are for your uh, sideband. Uh, it'll let you know upper sideband. It'll also let you know AM. It runs over here to the Arduino. Uh, by default the kits are on lower side so that's why we only need to have two wires. If we bring this one low, it's on AM. If we bring this one low, it's on upper side. If we don't have any of those low, then it defaults to just regular sideband. Then we go over here, and you notice we do a lot of extra wiring. We kind of loop back, like the display wiring for the display up there, the encoder wiring. We leave that long. If you ever need to work on one of our kits, you can clip a wire tie. You'll have enough wire that you can come out and do what you need to do. Coax comes over here for the converter. Comes up to the converter board right there to the uh, where the antenna is, right in there. We have a power wire, a ground, and we have the activation wire for that. And that all goes back, of course, up to the Arduino. What we did on this, because it, it you know, this old stuff ran on some voltages that <laughs> weren't exactly you know, 13.8 or 12 or anything. So to protect stuff, we'll do something like this. We'll, we'll make our own little power supply here. This is the little 5-volt uh, regulator. And this here um, is your keying transistor. Remember, the kit is in control of the transmit for things like Roger Beep and PTT delay and timeout timers and all the things that it has. So that's something else you did. Uh, what else? Um, I think that's it. You know, just gave it a proper tune-up and got everything going. The extender board, uh, we didn't have one, 
so we went over to the uh, CNC machine and we actually uh, just milled out a quick extender board and that worked out really nice for us put the connectors on it we could do a nice factory tune-up uh, off to how it sounds and what it's uh, what it's doing I'll, I'll do some videos on the uh, different bands and on the HF receiver See if we got any sideband out here today. There's something out there, but not much. few guys coming in. It's working good. Now a little weird skip coming in on channel 6. This is with the cover on. Everything looks real nice on this radio. Real nice. Real nice. Very, very pretty. I love the radio. I, I wish I had one. This is really cool. And with the addition of the uh, kit, boy, I'll tell you, man, it's, it's really fun. Let's see here. Let's get her back on frequency a little bit. There we go. Kind of weird. Crazy skip, huh? Anyway, if you uh, like it, like the video, please uh, subscribe to the channel, share, and let people know about the DDS VFO kit. We are looking for dealers. If you're a CB shop and you'd like to do this kind of work, give us a call, give us an email, and we'll get you set up. Have a great evening, everybody.